In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to use the collection container and specifically use column selection and reordering capabilities. So when you're showing collections of data in Redwood pages, uh, one of the components that we recommend using is the collection container. There's a basic one and an advanced one. We're going to use the basic one for this demo. It provides you with a search slot. So usually when you have a collection, you want to allow people to search on things that is shown there. So you can add a search. And then into the collection slot, you would drop a table. So I'm going to use the data palette to take the employees, drop it into the collection slot as a table. Uh, you can also drop a list, by the way. And we're going to select the columns we want to show over here, for example, like that. Um, picture should be an image, for example. Over here, you can tie in the filter to the search, um, but we'll skip it for this demo. Right, so you have the table showing up in a collection container. So you might be wondering, why do I need a collection container? It's because the collection container itself has a bunch of properties. Um, so for example, if you add the add button, delete button, um, export button, those are all default buttons that you can add to the collection and they work on the information in the collection. Now, one thing to note, they are not actually doing anything out of the box. You would need to add an event here for those add, delete, export events in order to do something, right? But it's giving you a standard look for all your tables, right? Now, the one additional thing I want to talk about today is the manage column button, which is this one. This one allows you to select which columns are going to be shown in the table. Okay. Um, to do that, we're using the active columns and hidden columns properties over here. If you click on it, you would see that this is an array of objects. Uh, and if you go to the component documentation, the collection container in the component exchange, over here you have explanation of how to use the whole component. Under the API section, you can see the structure for an active column. It needs to have an ID field and an header text. Okay, so those are the two mandatory attributes that need to be there. So if you're going to use this in your application, you would want to go over and create a variable. Uh, you can call it, for example, active columns. And it needs to be an array of object. And we said we need to have at least two fields. One is called ID, and the other one is called uh, header text. Okay. And now you can provide a default value over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my table over here. And there's a property for the table called column. And the columns basically list all the columns in the table. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go back to my variable over here, and I'm going to paste it here. Right? Now, what you would notice is that um, we have the header text for all of those, but we're missing the ID. And we have a couple of additional fields that are or attributes that are shown here. So let's add those attributes over here. One of them is called sortable, and the other one is called field. And if we look here, there's one more, uh, the template one. So create field, template. So now we have a situation where basically the structure is almost the same. There's one thing that is missing from what I copied from the columns, and that's the ID of a field. So let's add an ID property. So do it like this, ID attribute, and then the ID that we want to provide. I'm just going to use the name of the column here. So we'll add this to each one of the objects that we have in our array. This would be the name. This would be the salary, the job, and the email. Right. So now that we have this variable, we can go back to our page, select our collection container, and for active columns, we can map this to our active columns property. Okay. And there's one more thing that you need to do, uh, and which is to take and use the same variable 
as the table columns property okay because we have the same values in here we can just switch it over to be based on the active columns All right so the table still shows up correctly and we can now run our page that we have all the employees in a table with the columns and if we click here we can for example say hey I don't want to show the email and I want the job to be shown before the salary so you can reposition columns and when you do this we adjust the table okay now one more thing that you can do um, so so far I started with all the columns and then I was able to hide some of them or show some of them just by picking them up from here and adding them over here but if you notice the property here we have active columns but we also have um, so for the collection container we also have hidden columns so what you can do is you can take for example the active columns variable right click on it and say duplicate and then rename this to be hidden columns So this is a new variable and then you can decide hey you know what um, initially the job and the email are going to be hidden okay and in the active at this point of time I'm going to hide the job and the email initially okay so I'm gonna remove them from here make sure that I don't have an extra comma and now I'm gonna go back to the page and bind the hidden columns attribute to the hidden columns variable All right so now if we go back to the page and refresh it All right initially we have those three columns if we pop up the column management we can add columns from the hidden list so I can add the email for example and I can add stuff to be hidden for example if I don't want to show the picture like this so now we have mapping to those variables and the other variables and I can completely control what's going to be shown where in my application like that so this is column control using the panel collection